What is going on, my fellow TCG enjoyers? I am about to leave for the airport to go to Vancouver Regionals, but before that, I want to go over Great Tusk with you guys. Uh, this has been one of my favorite decks to play from the new Temporal Forces post-rotation meta. Um, the deck has been a lot stronger than I thought, uh, and it's a really cool deck, right? You mill your opponent to win, you're taking zero prizes. Uh, it's just a win condition that we don't see often in the Pokemon TCG. So I'm going to go over the back deck list I have today, go over the card choices I've made, and I'm going to play some games and show off the, the power of this deck. So uh, to start, we have the Great Tusk, the star of the show. So its first attack, land collapse for two colorless energy. You discard the top card of your opponent's deck. But if you play an Ancient Supporter, something like a Professor Sada's Vitality or the Explorer's Guidance, you mill a full four cards. Um, so obviously you need a lot of mill to mill someone out in the Pokemon TCG, but between opening hand, draw for turn, and prize cards, your opponent's going to start with 46 cards in deck. So if we can get off, like, let's say six mills uh, normally if they take a prize every turn, which is ambitious for our opponent, that's 24 cards milled off their deck. So that's 22 more to account for. And then they normally have to play cards to get their deck set up. Charizard, for example, has to find a Charizard, six energies out of the deck with the ability. Uh, any loss on deck has to flower select, colorist to get cards out. So your opponent will do a lot of milling for you, which is really great with this deck. Uh, and the second attack isn't the worst either. Uh, you are very rarely going to use it, but when you play Professor Sada and you have double turbo in your deck, uh, it's very possible to power it up. So if you play against people, a common strategy against this deck would be to like have one Pokemon attacking, that's it. So maybe they have like one Iron Hands attacking you, or they have like one basic attacking you, or like Chen Pao only puts one Baxcalibur into play. Uh, you can Giant Tusk and knock it out, and then buy yourself some more time to mill. So yeah, this is obviously who you want to be attacking with the most, but we also have some other options in this deck. So we have the Mimikyu. So Mimikyu is really good uh, at forcing your opponent to bench suboptimal things. Uh, so if you face a Charizard EX deck, for example, they might just put a Charizard EX and a Pidgeot EX into play. Uh, so you have nothing to counter catch or stall later in the game. Uh, so if you put Mimikyu into play, you force your opponent to bench something like a Radiant Charizard, bench something like Charmeleon, uh, you just force them to put things into play that they wouldn't want to, and that you can then take advantage of with Gust. And there's some matchups where um, they don't play that many non-EX or V Pokemon. So for example, the new Future Box, the Maridon Iron Hands deck, they only really play two Maridons. So if you mill one, for example, with Great Tusk, or you even knock it out with Giant Tusk, and you play the Mimikyu down, they actually don't have a way sometimes to get through it, especially if you've milled Super Odd or something like that. So Mimikyu is fantastic for forcing bad Pokemon into play, and it also can be a win condition if you mill your opponent's resources. Next up, we have Mowile. So this is a card that's been seeing play in Standard. We play it for the Tempting Trap. Uh, so one thing is a lot of decks don't play a lot of switching cards. Uh, they play like maybe two or three if even. Um, so if they have something on their board that can't attack, or they've run out of energies, or something with this deck, it's like you're going to mill resources. So you're going to mill switching cards, you're going to mill super rods, you're going to mill like jet energies. So if you know that your opponent doesn't really have a way to switch, uh, you can just mobile tempting trap, get something stuck forever, and just win by deck out that way. Uh, so mobile has been a very strong tool for me. I really like it in the deck, uh, and it's a really good alternate win condition. Uh, next up, we play Radiant Greninja. Um, I think everyone knows how good this card is. Uh, concealed cards is great to draw cards, but it's also good for getting our basic energy in the discard, so we can use Professor Sada onto our Great Tusk. Next up, we have Comfy. Uh, this, I'm not 100% sure if it needs to be in the deck. I actually like took this idea from the top 16 list from the Fukuoka Champions League. Uh, we do play two copies of Rescue Board in this deck, just to help us retreat when we don't start with the Great Tusk. Um, so yeah, you can just bench a Comfy, find your rescue board, and you basically have a nice pivot the whole game that lets you see an additional two cards every turn. Uh, I've liked it so far. It's also like a decent starter if you don't start Great Tusk, uh, but I'm not 100% sold. Now finally we have the Pidgeot V. Um, you actually go through your deck really fast with Great Tusk, especially because Explorer's Guidance uh, mills six every time. Uh, so this just ensures that you never deck out, and that we're decking out our opponents. And another thing to note is if you want to play Sada or Explorer's Guidance, you have to have a card in your deck. So once you get to the late game, you can just Vanishing Wings, the Pidgeot, play your supporter, Vanishing Wings again. So that's the Pokemon lineup. Um, I think it's pretty solid right now. Nothing I really am looking to change. All right, moving on to our supporters. We play four copies of Professor Sada's and four copies of Explorer's Guidance. Uh, honestly, these are both like kind of like meh supporters, but they're the only ancient supporters we have, so we kind of have to play them. Um, one tip I will give you with Sada, which you'll see in the games that I've played, is you don't always need to put two energy into play. Uh, sometimes if I have two in my discard, I just put one, so I can Sada again the following turn. 
Uh, since I have double turbo to attack, you can just attack naturally after Asada. So that's one thing to look out for. And the Explorer's Guidance, uh, this card's been okay. Um, milling, like, or like having to get rid of four cards is actually pretty significant. So you have to manage your resources really well with this card, but uh, it is pretty good for digging. I find early in the game, this is probably your supporter of choice because it's going to help you find that double turbo to attack. Um, but later on in the game, uh, you're normally set up and you know what you need. So I do play two supporters that aren't ancient supporters. So that might seem a little counterintuitive since we won't be milling for the full four, but they're such powerful disruption cards that I think they merit inclusion. So the first one is Airy. This is a new card from Temporal Forces where your opponent reveals their hand and you discard two item cards you find there. So one would I use Airy. So I mentioned earlier that we have a while in the deck to help Tempting Trap. Uh, Airy is really good at sniping switching outs from their hand. So if a deck plays like Switch Card or Escape Rope or something like that, you can airy, get those cards out of their hand, and then you can Tempting Trap. And then if they want to switch and they still have switch cards left, they have to dig through their deck to find them. So they're basically like milling for you. Um, it's also good if you put Mimic you into play. Um, you can just airy. And honestly, it's just like if your opponent's been sitting there for a long time and building up a hand with resources, airy could be a good uh, thing to go after. Like if you're playing as a Chen Pao, like if you snipe a super retrieval or you snipe a super odd, uh, that's effectively like an attack or like super odds like three cards back in their deck so it's basically the same thing as doing a lance collapse uh, so if you are able to get a read that this card is good i think it's really strong and the other thing is you get perfect knowledge of your opponent's hand you'll know every card they have to work with so you know what they can and can't play around so maybe you'll know oh they're really weak to a counter catcher right now or they're really weak to me putting a bravery charm or the hero's cape which we'll touch on later so yeah i've liked airy but i'm not 100 percent sure it needs to be there but it's been good so far then the other supporter, this one looks, I think, very counterintuitive, the Iono, since we're going to be putting cards back into our opponent's deck for them. Uh, but the reason I think Iono works really well in this deck is late in the game when your opponent gets to like one or two prize cards, if you're able to combine Iono with a counter catcher, uh, you actually make it extremely difficult for your opponent to draw out of that. Uh, especially since during the game, like you're going to be playing counter catcher earlier, you're going to be milling with land collapse, like they should be extremely low on resources to switch. So if you get something trapped in the active and they don't attack, you're just buying yourself free turns to mill with land collapse. So even if you make your opponent put back like six or seven cards into their deck, as long as you get something stuck, uh, it pays off because you'll get those cards back with the mill. So I like Iono. Uh, I think it's really good uh, late into the game. And then I'm playing a full four copies of Poke Gear 3.0. Uh, we want an Ancient Supporter pretty much every turn besides the scenarios I described earlier. Um, this is just a good early consistency card. Obviously, there's only eight Ancient Supporters we can play, so this just ups our odds. Uh, I play two Palpad. Uh, again, you want to be using your Ancient Supporters as much as possible, so just having that constant flow throughout the game is really nice. On our ball cards, I play four Nest Ball. Uh, helps us search out every Pokemon in our deck. Uh, not much more to say about that. I do play the one copy of the Heavy Ball, uh, some of the Pokemon are really important in your prizes, and we don't take prizes, so you can't fish them out. So, for example, Pidgeot's prize, you really need it. Uh, some games, if you want to go from a while and mimic you, Heavy Ball's nice. If you prize a Great Tusk, nice, just take one out. So, uh, yeah, the one copy of Heavy Ball has been nice for me. I play a full four copies of Counter Catcher. This is one of the most important cards in the deck. So, you want to make it as hard as possible for your opponent to attack and take a prize every turn. And by using Counter Catcher on a bench threat that your opponent can't attack with, you force them to either find energy to retreat or find a switching card to retreat. And if they don't have one in their hand, they have to go in their deck to find those cards. And you're basically forcing them to go through their deck and mill cards for you effectively. Uh, and if you ever counter catcher and your opponent misses an attack, that's another free four cards we get to mill. So uh, I think the deck should play four. I think it's staple. Uh, this is just so core of the deck. And when we get to our, our stadiums, I'll talk about how we can make this strategy even better. I play three copies of Earthen Vessel. Um, energies are very good, obviously. We need them in the discard to use Professor Sada. We need them to use concealed cards with Greninja. Uh, so yeah, I just play three copies here. Uh, I've considered four just to up that consistency a little bit more. Um, but I've found that the three copies ha has been enough so far. We play double Super Odd. Uh, this is mainly just to keep putting back great tusks. We only play four, obviously. We want to use the full six in the game. So this just helps us get them back. Uh, if you need to get back Mimikyu or while, it's good. If you ever need to get back energy late in the game, I don't know, so you can have concealed cards you can do that i rarely do that but that's an option so just a nice little recovery all right now let's go to our tools so i play three bravery charm uh this is just to make our great tusk have more health uh, make it as hard as possible for opponent to knock out uh, if you force your opponent to two shot a great tusk that is a very good trade for you uh getting off two land collapses is always nice 
Um, so yeah, 190 is normally enough against a lot of things. I considered the Ancient Booster Capsule the additional 10 HP to get us to 200, but there's not really many scenarios where that's useful. Uh, like Gardevoir EX, I guess, does 190, but that's not really seeing play. Uh, the Roaring Moon, like, non-EX can do 190 theoretically, but like, that's kind of niche. And if they're doing that much, they have so many in the discard, you're probably winning already. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting some niche scenario, but I just like the utility of having the Bravery Charm on the Mimikyu. Uh, so Charmeleon can't knock it out, for example. Bravery Charm on the Wild, for example, if you need to. Uh, so that's what I like. Uh, and I think the big matchup where like Bravery Charm does its job is like against Charizard EX, they can only hit E for 180. So forcing them to use their vacuums. Uh, some lists only play one, some play two. If you mill their vacuum at any point in the game, uh, then your Great Tusks are good to trade really favorably. So big fan of the Bravery Charm. Next up, we have the Rescue Board. I play two copies of this. Uh, this is mainly just to go on one of these Pokemon up the top, the ones that aren't Great Tusk. It gives you a nice little pivot, so whenever a Great Tusk gets knocked out, if we don't have another one on the board, we have Free Retreat, pretty much. Uh, and like I said earlier, it's a really nice combo with the Home Feed to make sure we look at an additional two cards every turn. Finally, our A spec for the deck is the Hero's Cape. The Pokemon this card is attached to gets 100 HP extra, so making our Great Tusk have 240 uh, that's more health than basic EXs and V Pokemon. So ideally, when you put this down, your opponent's not taking a knockout. And again, like I'm saying, any time when your opponent doesn't take a knockout is another four cards you get to mill. So I'm a really big fan of the Hero's Cape. It's been testing really well for me. Uh, you could consider playing Prime Catcher as another Gust, but I just find the Counter Catchers are good enough. You're going to be losing pretty much every game. So uh, I think the utility of the Hero's Cape is just a little bit better. All right, on our stadiums, I play two copies of the Calamitous Wasteland. Uh, so any non-basic, and any non-fighting basic Pokemon have one more retreat cost. So obviously this is really good with our counter catcher. Uh, a lot of decks post-rotation aren't playing as many stadiums, mainly because Path of the Peak is gone. Uh, so you can actually like gust up something like a Squawk ability and play this and have it, get, have, it have two retreat, and you can really trap it. So I think you're seeing the theme is in this deck is you want to basically just make it so your opponent can't take prizes. Any turn your opponent doesn't take prizes is another turn we get to mill, another chance we get to hit good resources, another chance we get closer to milling them out. So Calamitous Wasteland is really good at that. Also, if your opponent starts with something that's not an attacker, if you just put this down turn one, sometimes they miss an attack. So uh, yeah, very good card. Really happy with this one so far. I have like two copies of Artisan, um, so along with the four Nest Ball, I have six outs to search for my Great Tusk early, search for Mimikyu when I need it, Comfy, whatever, um, and it's nice. So the one thing with Artisan when you play against other decks, like normally, is you're giving your opponent free Pokemon search, but we don't really care if our opponent puts extra Pokemon into play. That's basically stuff that we can gust up later. So honestly, the benefit is pretty one-sided for the Artisan, so I think it works really well in this deck. And to finish off, let's go over our energy cards. We have four copies of Double Turbo. I think this makes a lot of sense. Lance Claps needs two colorless. Um, so obviously you want to pull four copies. Early in the game, turn one, you're normally going to attack by using Explorer's Guidance and a Double Turbo. Uh, if you have a Sada, that's good too, but I find this is normally the combo I use the most. I play two copies of Jet Energy. Um, so this might seem a little bit strange, but I think it just helps me turn one attack a little bit more. Uh, so if you don't start with Great Tusk, um, you can Professor Sada to a Great Tusk, and you can Jet Energy to use Land Collapse. It's also just a good switching card. Uh, if you want to attack with Mawile, for example, or get Mimikyu into the active, Great Tusk does have three Retreat. So just having the option to bring it up easier, because the Rescue Board doesn't really work on the Great Tusk, you'd have to get rid of your energies. I just find this is nice, uh, and has a little bit more utility than me playing something like a switching cart. Uh, and then finally for energies, I play four basic fighting and one psychic. And so the fightings, as I said earlier, are good with a great tusk to use giant tusk. If you want to knock something out like a Iron Hands EX, a Backscalibur, a Maridon, stuff like that. Um, I do play one copy of psychic energy in case you ever want to use Ghost Eye with Mimikyu. To be honest, like I don't really think that's necessary. So I might switch this one psychic to a fifth fighting. Uh, but yeah, that's the deck list uh, I have so far for Great Tusk. It's been testing really well, and it's a really fun deck to play. Uh, not for your opponent to play against, but I personally really enjoy it. Uh, I think Mill is a really cool win condition. Uh, and this deck just plays super unique to any deck that we have in the standard. So yeah, I'll play some games, uh, and you guys let me know what you think of the list and what you're trying out with Great Tusk. All right, Tails, let's see if our opponent lets us go second. 
We are going first. I think I've almost every game I've played so far, post rotation, everyone's always picking second. Um, okay, this was a really good hand. I wish I had a basic. So our opponent might think we're playing uh, Ancient Box if they see that. But the counter catcher and Artisan might tip them off. All right, comfy. Um, not the worst. And we have a rescue board double turbo, so we actually can attack easily. Uh, I might not nest ball right away because I want to draw another basic. We're playing against the ancient box. Okay. Uh, comfy is going to get knocked out then, so it's not the best for us. Oh my goodness, those are two very, very good cards. I have to like, get rid of the double turbo. It feels bad, but. No, it's too strong. All right, so off the bat, we prize the Great Tusk. Everything else I have on the Pokemon side. Prize the Explorer's Guidance. Ooh, prize the Counter Catcher. Did I prize the Battle Pad? Nope, got it in my hand. Prize the... No, I didn't prize the Ball. Prize some Vessels. Rescue Board's in my hand. Prize... Uh, no, or one energy. Okay. Um... I can preemptively put this in case they own on me. I think that's fine. And they really just need to draw a solid to take a knockout, so I'm not going to waste my rescue board. Uh, yeah, our hand's very reliant on Poke Gearing into Adventure's guidance next turn, which is a little scary. Um, there was maybe merit to retreating to make it harder for them to take a knockout, but if they knock out my Great Tusk, it's really hard. I could like I could have thrown the Hero's Cape down, but I can just throw it down next turn. All right. I don't know. Uh, my initial thoughts on this matchup are I actually think it's pretty good. Um, they can't knock us out easily early in the game. Later in the game, once they have tons of the discard that we've milled, they can one-shot us with Roaring Moon. But in the early game, it should be pretty easy for us to force them into two-hit knockouts with the Bravery Charms. And this deck thrives in any matchup where uh, you can force them to take two-hit knockouts. Uh, this would be very nice for our opponent whips. Nice. All right, so I'm going to flower select before I poke gear because I want the highest odds of seeing a supporter. So this way we effectively get to look at like nine before I shuffle the deck back. Uh, I'm going to take the Great Tusk. And then gear into adventures or explorers, whatever that thing's called. Nope, I hit Airy and Iono. Uh, I guess I'll take Airy and just use it. Our opponent didn't seem to have a very strong hand, so let's Airy. This also gives us perfect information to work with. Uh, okay, nice. Super Odd and Palpad. Those are great hits. They have a boss fighting energy switch. So not doing a lot with that. Uh, they might boss our Great Tusk next turn. I mean, I have Jet Energy if I want to Comfy again, so it's not a big deal. Uh, or they might just attach and hit us for 30. So, Aerie, putting in some work there. Alright, Conceal. Let's see what they get. That was their attachment for the turn. Sandy Shocks. Uh, this thing's okay. Like, once it gets powered up, it can one-shot us with a Bravery Charm. But uh, before it does that, it's kind of just a bench sitter. All right. Yeah, they'll never get to use the ability. But this is actually a pretty good card for knocking out Iron Hand. So I understand why it's in the deck. Sada. They need one more basic to take a knockout. Not too hard. And then we're actually going to be in a lot of trouble. Assuming I don't top deck adventures, guidance, or something. Yeah, there comes the Ultra Ball. Uh, you know what? Maybe I should have retreated last turn. Because uh, I knew their hand wasn't that good. So, probably a mistake on my part. But we're not going to get punished. We're going to draw adventures, right? Or explorer's guidance. I keep forgetting what it's called. This, you don't really need to bench this. This is getting counter Uh Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I mean, if I whiff, I want this one, right? Uh, I mean, I have jet energy. If I have to counter catch the raging bolt, I'd rather just have this one. So our odds of drawing are pretty low. <clears throat> okay, now I really wish I actually put up the other one because I can not spell for Greninja. I didn't think about this, so bad on my part. Now I have to hit Explorers, plus I have to hit uh, 
Another double turbo. Okay, it doesn't matter. I mean, next turn we have an out to Sada. And a counter catcher. This thing. Uh, I actually don't care if they bellowing thunder us, because then they're discarding energy in play. Probably with two off here. Um, so I'm actually going to Heroes Cape now to force a four discard. So our opponent got a really slow start, but so did we. Um, I could have milled for one, but I don't know. I'd rather just protect this. Um, okay. Booster capsule. Doesn't really do anything against me. Okay, another Sandy Shocks. This definitely should not be hitting the bench. They might burst roar this turn, to be honest, too. No, they're definitely gonna. Sada. Okay. I'm gonna counter catch her this next turn, I think. Stop. What's what I. Oh, they have a Mew. That's fine. I don't really care. Um, this is a really good target for me to Mawile. Tempting Trap later. Actually, Greninja is better. Um, okay, true. No Liono for me. Thank you. They <laughs> basically did a land clops for us. And then they'll probably get rid of Hall on the bench, maybe? I don't know. But this is why the cape is good. So yes, I'm not stopping a knockout, but I'm literally forcing to wipe all this energy off their board. Um, so this turn, we can just counter catch her again. Hopefully we draw Sada or Explorers this time, but we'll see. Nest Ball, I'm gonna do it first, if in my deck. I'm a while, I guess, I don't know. Did I prize double tusk? No, I prized one, right? Yeah, one, one, one. That's right, because one got discarded. Concealed into... There we go, finally. All right, we're cooking. Great tusk. Okay. Um, do I Artisan? So, like, obviously I want them to keep milling with Pokestop, but... Uh, I'd just prefer that they don't get, like, switching cards, right? And Pokestop might help them get that. Because every turn they don't attack is another turn where I get a free land collapse. Alright, let's do it. I don't even know how many switching cards this type of deck plays. Oh, they play Thornton, too. That's a cool switching card. Super odds in the discard. Because, yeah, eventually, like, as a last resort, I can Tempting Trap the Greninja. But I would prefer to avoid that. I'd rather just uh, win by duck out. And we have them pretty low. They're going to be at 13 after this. Uh, so yeah, there's that Sada. Putting energy on this. They need energy switches or just switch or escape rope or something. Pokemon catcher. Interesting. I mean, it makes sense. They're playing an aggressive deck. I actually like that in their deck. Okay, and they can take up a while. It's fine. Uh, don't really care. I can put the rescue board on it if I have to. They might retreat? I don't know. Doesn't seem very good. But, I mean, I, what's the alternative? I'm not taking a prize this turn. Uh, pro okay, they have Prime Catcher. So, they can knock out this. Okay. And I guess... Um, they definitely should have attached a Coridon then. Because now they have to take a knockout by discarding energies. If I draw a Prime Catcher, or Counter Catcher again... That just comes up. And they have one Sada left. So they're running low on energy. And is there a Palpad in their discard? I assume they play Palpad. Oops. Um, trainers. Yeah, okay. That's right. I remembered correctly. Ah, uh, yeah. Great Tusk can just go up. Doesn't really matter. I'm probably going to attach a Jet to it this turn. Uh, one card I would really like to draw right now is Super Odd. So I'm going to actually Explorers, because I want to hit Super Odd. Okay, no Super Odd. Uh, Prime Catcher, and... Uh, I'll take another Explorers next turn to dig for that Super Odd, because I'm going to need it. And let's bring back up that Sandy Shocks. Um... It's fine to touch the jet. I am going to rescue board my Mawile, uh, just in case I got Ion out here. So if I draw Super Odd, I can have a pivot. I have double turbo, so we're good. 
Then energy switch, nice. I still haven't seen a switching card from my opponent. I assume they play some, but who knows. All right, Ultra Ball thinning more for us, perfect. They have 12 total cards left. So if there's one turn where they don't take a knockout, we pretty much just win, assuming I can get the Super Red. Okay, there's the Pokestop, that's really annoying for us because then I have to explore into a Nest Ball, which I think I only have one left. Uh, yeah. Or did I prize one? I forget when I sent to my deck. Okay, there's the Rod. So this buys them one additional turn. If I see a pass from my opponent, we pretty much win. But I still need to draw Super Rod. They must play a switching card, because they there's no reason to focus up either ways. Boss, Greninja, okay, perfect. Oh, my wild, okay, okay. Switch card. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I probably would have knocked out. Uh, this kind of tells me they don't play a switching card, because they're scared of this. Uh, we just need uh, two more mills to win, probably. Uh, yeah. The last one's not trivial, though, because I don't have Great Tusk. I need Super Odd still. Like, I might even consider Pokestop if I miss it off of this Explorers. Do I ever... Pokestop first, because if I hit Super Odd, I can get Great Tusk off of the Explorer, so I think I do. I don't really care about half the cards I'm going to discard here. I have Palpad. Okay, so no Super Rod. Uh, do I have Gear within one card if I hit a Supporter? I think I'm going to do it. This is definitely... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, because I need to Explorers. If I get Super Rod here, I need to Explorers in two. Again... I'm gonna keep doing this. I really need to hit Super Odd. Okay, well, I would've hit it. But I still think that was correct, because I have another supporter for next turn. Explorers. There's Super Odd, okay. Uh, you know what, the Bravery Charm is decent right now, too. <clears throat> so let's Bravery Charm. Uh, rescue Board here, so I have a Pivot. How many Ancient Supporters are gone? Do I have Palpod in case I get Ionode? Yeah, I probably do. Let's put the Great Tusks back. No need for... Uh, the Fighting could be a Concealed card, but no, I don't need that. I'm not going to bow bad. Uh, for our opponent, I own those. I have a pretty good chance of drawing our last Explorers. Okay. <clears throat> Also, like, I don't even know if they can take a knockout this turn. Like, probably not, right? Like, they have one Soddle left, but then they would have to sweep Rod or something. Okay. Yeah, there's the last Sada. Okay, zero cards in deck. So. Unless you're holding Super Odd in your hand. That's a win for the Great Tusk. Nice. Good game. Okay, so this is obviously not an ideal starting hand. We're gonna have to explore this into a Great Tusk. Maybe we just switch our Mawile. Uh, but looking at my opponent's sleeves, I assume they're playing Chen Pao. Looking at the Mulligans, they're definitely playing Chen Pao, and this is actually a really good matchup for us. Uh, so let's see if we can take this one down. So the reason this matchup is good is if they wanna keep taking one shots, they have to keep getting rid of energy, keep getting rid of resources. Uh, which makes it just fairly easy for us to eventually just lock them out of the game. To keep counter-catching stuff like the Bibberal, uh, they need to retreat, that's two energy. When we're milling, if we ever hit Super Rod or Superior Energy Retrieval, uh, that's another basically prize that we're going to stomp. So, but we do need to draw well. And one thing is if our opponent 
doesn't retreat, we could maybe Tempting Trap, but Thickness Evolve, evolve to uh, the Barrel to get out of it. But we'll have that as an option, so let's see. Now the other thing is if I find a way to discard an energy turn one, I could saw a jet. That'd be good. So our opponent is rocking the ditto. Uh, I don't have this in my Chen Pao list right now, but this is a very solid card. Um, let's you turn one Buddy Poffin and then turn this into Chen Pao if you want. But I just found there's not that many matchups where I want to do that. So, uh, okay, our opponent definitely missequenced that. <laughs> um, but that's all right. Okay, so bring Ninja, because yeah, now they just have a Ditto on their bench. So I could Tempting Trap this eventually and kind of just win. Uh, okay, so, but I'll try and play the game normally and I'll use that as the last resort. Okay, so we got that. So I have one of each ancient support in my hand. So another prize, Countercatcher prize, Palpad prize, Nest Ball. I, I'm using one right now. Super odd. I don't forget if I have on my hand. I do. I price two Vessel. Oh, I didn't price Countercatcher on my hand. Artisan in my hand, double turbo, two prized, and then energy prized, okay. Or two energy prized. So I'm gonna go ahead and explore. I just really wanna hit that switching option. Don't see it, don't see it, don't see it, don't see it. Okay, not the best, so let's just set up for next turn. Uh, grab the Great Husk. And I have Sada in my hand already, but I think having two would be nice. My only problem is I have one I only have one energy in the discard if I do it this way, but that should be fine. Um countercatcher is also really nice. This is actually a tough decision. Our opponent had a weak turn, so let's go this way. And then because like they'll knock out a great tusk if I saw it, they should go back to the discard. And I have countercatcher already, so. Uh, no reason not to bench this. And then I'm just going to hold on to this hand. Chen Pao usually only plays one or two copies of Iono, if any. So I feel fairly safe with this. But I could have maybe considered a double turbo to one of these tusks. But uh, next turn I'm going to Jet and Sada. Alright, so there comes the back Scalibur. We know they don't have energy in their hand because they would have retreated turn one. So here comes the Stop, Nest Ball, and Irida. That's not good for our opponent. Okay, here comes the Nest. I'm just going to grab Chen Pao. But we shall see. <laughs> also, the name of the deck is Splup. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, Granger makes sense as well. Uh, I assume the barrel is going to come out as well. This card's probably useful, otherwise, they would have discarded it and played the Cologne to draw a full five. Okay, there comes the Chen Pao. Interesting. I wonder what this last card is. If it's an energy, they could also retreat. Okay, it's big brother. That makes a lot of sense. I was gonna say, if it's an energy, they could just retreat and then knock this out if they want. So, okay. So let's assume they're gonna knock us out this turn. They need to draw two energies or a super retrieval. Uh, if they have the super retrieval right now, that'd be very good for us. Okay, next turn, I'm probably just gonna counter catcher uh, the Bivirol. And that should be good for us. We do, uh, I don't hate this for my opponent because I'm not going to ever knock out any other Pokemon. Uh, and they already have Bibbrel, so they have one liability. My only problem with this is you don't have the option to Iron Hands. I don't know if my opponent's playing Iron Hands, but if you do play Iron Hands, uh, it can be quite useful in this matchup. Uh, eventually, this deck plays Prime Catcher, so you can Prime Catcher if I put a Radiant Green Engine into play, for example, uh, which I might do if I draw it. We don't know yet. Uh, you can Prime Catcher it. But now I know I do not have to be worried about that. Alright, so our opponent's thinking. My guess is they either whiffed or I was going to say they just think about super retrieval. So, okay, they whiffed. Super good for us. Now we get a land collapse off for free. So we're going to put that Sada. Okay, Greninja is nice. We still need an energy to discard so that we can um, use Sada again. Uh, I'm going to Bravery Charm. Just force my opponent to waste as many energy as possible. So now instead of 3 with the Chen Pao, you do need a full 4 to knock this out. I could consider Pokestop. And I could consider playing this Artisan, which I think I'm actually going to do. I want to block my opponent's outs. I know that they're milling like their deck if they go for it. But if they miss an attack, um, that effectively just gives us another free turn to mill. Or if I want next turn, I can maybe try an Airy to snipe. Maybe like Super Odd or something either hand. So we'll see what our opponent does. Um, but we have lots of options, so that's great. One super retrieval gone, that represents like one prize pretty much gone. Uh, and they have to be careful with discarding their energies because they can only super rod them back and super retrieval. 
And if I'm forcing them to use three or four every time the Chen Pao, it is going to be very difficult for them to win. Okay, so yeah, here comes that Prime Catcher. Probably on the... Oh, I was going to say probably on the Wild if I want to use two. Uh, but they're going to do the full three and knock us out with the Hail Blade. There's that Super Rod. So I'll probably hold on to Aerie uh, until later in the game, potentially. I think if there's ever a turn where I tempting trap an airy, that would be super strong. Because uh, now the prime catcher is gone, like I don't really think they have a way to get out of a tempting trap lock. Uh, but I feel like that's kind of cheap. I want to try winning this game just normally and see what would happen. Okay. See, this is unnecessary for my opponent. You do not need to be going this aggressive. Like they have their ideal setup right now. Uh, they're just drawing cards from their deck, putting more energy in the discard, forcing themselves to have to use superior and super on the future to keep attacking. So a little too greedy for my liking. Uh, they're already down to 17 cards. Um, and I assume they played super as their only recovery, so like potentially have two more. They might play one Iona, uh, but don't know for sure. All right, so we're going to put up the Great Tusk. We have the Sada because... Actually, we don't have Sada, actually, because our guy got not, didn't get knocked out with the energy. Whoops. Well, that's bad on my part. Um, okay, so it might be an airy turn then. Uh, airy is really good because it gives you perfect knowledge of your opponent's hand. So let's play airy. And oh, this is fantastic. We're sniping a superior from their hand. Um, so that's two in the discard. They actually don't have. I'm actually not going to discard another card from their hand because I don't want them to be able to bib roll for more. And none of these cards in their hand are playable right now. Um, so, yeah, whatever I top deck, if it's not a playable card, they can't use it. So let's make it hard for them to knock us out next turn. Uh, let's also just kind of catch this bib roll. So they would need a superior energy retrieval, plus they need to shiver chill for one from the deck. Um, here, we can burn this, sure. Yep, we can reset this prize, it's prized. I guess I could just do that in case I get my own node. Uh, Prime Catcher's gone now, so I'm fine to put this down. Um... And then I guess I can Artisan keep thinning my deck. Yeah, so may I like I if I was in a tournament, I should have and I probably would have just mawiled this uh, this up and then played the airy. Or I would airy first to see what I get and then mawile. Uh, I actually feel comfortable granging one of the double turbos. We don't need them. I want yeah, I want this, so next turn I can get energy to discard and Sada. Uh, I could have done that maybe first and then see, but I like doing airy there. Um, we do the mill for one, we mill the Frigi backs. I would have been very happy if my opponent drew that, so. Oh, also my opponent had one more card I didn't see. Uh, <clears throat> I forgot that when you air it, it just shows you items. Uh, so I'm guessing the water energy was the card they had. Okay, so they're going all in on Vibril again. Again, for us this is fine. Um, I do not care because they are milling themselves for me. Perfect. All right, they can super cold and retreat if they want. They've got, uh, how many superiors? superiors? Yeah, like two left, so go for it. Vessels, okay. And I guess the last card in their hand might be superior. So if they do that, they'll take a prize. They have 10 total cards left. Uh, we really need, just need to mill them two more times. And we're gonna win, probably. I mean, they need superior. They can't just super odd and then shiver chill because we have the bravery charm. Yeah, so they can't even retreat, so. Uh, this game is pretty good for us. I'm considering counter-catching the other Bibril, having that one water locked in play forever. I know they have no more energy in their deck, because they would have got two off of the vessel, most likely. So, yeah, I think counter catcher makes a lot of sense here. Okay. Bring you up. <clears throat> Again, improper sequencing on my part. I should have sought it first just to see all the options I'm going to have. Um, still fine. We will survive. Okay, explorers for next turn. I could bravely try in case they play escape rope. Sure, I'll put on this one in case I get escape roped. And then land collapse. All right, they're down to four in deck. I don't know, it doesn't even save them cards at this point. So, yeah. <clears throat> Next turn, all we have to do is play this Explorer's Gardens, and we've got a game. I mean, assuming they didn't prize superior, they have two. I don't know if there's one in their hand, but... Yep. Yeah. Alright, so let's just Explorers, and then win the game. So, 
Yeah, I'm sure if you're watching this in a video, you don't know how many games I've played of Great Tusk, but this is my like sixth win in a row in my first six games of the deck. So hopefully I can improve my ranking and I can keep facing meta decks and like good decks. But the deck has been performing pretty well so far, better than I expected. Yeah, so there we go. Win by deck out. I always play to win. Heads, let's see if they go first. I don't mind going second. Okay, I'm going first. I'm probably playing it's like Charizard or Future Box or something. Let's see. Okay. Uh, so I'm actually going to start Great Tusk, even though I have Comfy, just because I have Explorers plus uh, Double Turbo. I also have Vessel Dude Draw with Greninja. So, pretty good start here. Can't complain. Okay, I'm playing as a Lawson deck. So I'm actually going to get rid of Comfy. Uh, you know what, actually, I could have started Comfy and just attached a retreat. Uh, I thought I was playing second. Okay, so I prized a couple energy. Prize Pidgeot. Prized. Nest. Prized Calamitous. Prizes Double Turbo. So not the worst. I can work with that. Okay, concealed. Um, I feel like I can probably attach the double turbo. Okay, nice. Another great tusk. Good start. So uh, if against Lost Box, they have so many switching out. So it's a bit hard to, uh, what's it called, trap them with Countercatcher. Um, but like their deck could struggle to take knockouts. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind, though, in mind for this matchup is Iron Hands is actually pretty good against me. Uh, that's something to watch out for. Uh, they could maybe try and Greninja snipe to like not activate Countercatcher right away, like over two turns. That doesn't seem the best. Um, and then Super Odd is the big card we're looking to mill in this matchup. Um, that's their main recovery here. Okay, so they're going for that Cram. Makes sense. Okay, they're playing Tina. Um, so Tina plays less switching cards, uh, so we might be able to get them trapped eventually. Uh, and they do need to play Colrus Flower Select, so they're going to be going through the deck aggressively as well. Okay, Gate. So for them, it's going to be interesting because they can just attack me with Shred the whole game, but I can put the Charms down. Uh, and that's going to be really good. And the first time I have to take a Cram hit, so that's fine. I'll just let myself take a Cram hit and save the Charm for the Great Tusk. The second great tusk. Okay, our opponent gave it a good trainer smartly. Don't need that. You just need one in this matchup because I'm not going to make prizes. Boss, interesting. So they can't cram me. So that's really nice. We're going to get one free, uh, or like mill probably. Okay, so let's explore this first. I could, actually, I probably should have concealed cards, so I have knowledge of what I'm going to discard. So I haven't looked at the other cards, but this feels right. It's definitely right. The area is kind of nice in this matchup. You can snipe the switching outs they have and maybe super odd, but I think just keeping the tusks going is going to be nice. Um, I think concealed's fine. We have Sada to work with. And I have another double turbo. Nice. Hero's Cape. That'll be good. So I think just contextually, there's some things we can assume. Our opponent doesn't have Chloris in their hand. They would have played it last turn. Um, so they're two in the Lost Zone, so they would need Colrus, uh, Comfy, Comfy, a third Comfy, Mirage Gate, a bunch of Switch cards to knock this out. So I'm actually going to hold the Hero's Cape. I want them to cram into this Great Tusk, and then next turn, or next time we use a Great Tusk, I'll put the Cape on it to protect it. Okay, so Switch, that's great. Uh, Mirage Gate's good too. Uh, they only really need one though. And then a Colrus, that's solid, because we know they don't have a lot to work with here. Um, yeah. And they do play water energy, so that's just something to be mindful of. Okay, so assuming they don't take a knockout this turn, we can probably get six mills off. So it's 24 cards, uh, and they're already at 29. So this is what I like about this deck a lot, is if your opponent like falters at the beginning of the game, uh, you put them on a really tight clock. Like, you accelerate it a lot. So, no, it's really good. Artisan, fine with me. That's a good card for us. Okay, double cram. This doesn't really feel necessary. Uh, they just milled one from their deck effectively. 
switch coming down. That's fine for us. Okay. Um, spit. Okay, so if I can find a jet energy, uh, that would actually be pretty good. Or I can just hero escape the cram, force them to attack with Giratina. So let's Artisan first. Let's thin the deck. Grab that Great Tusk. And let's Sada. I energy my discard. I might only pick one. Actually, there's three, so I can do two. It's fine. Take this. So I can Sada again if I need to. Cut. Um, so let's Hero's Cape. Uh, try and uh, protect that. I'm going to thin the deck. Uh, I have one fighting left in the deck. I'm going to Greninja. So I just want to make sure that we draw a Ancient Supporter for next turn. Um, there's no more basics in my deck, so those Nest Balls aren't really useful. I'm just going to hold on to them so I can Super Rod. And then Tusk. Put it back. So I should have waited to do all this stuff before Hero Escaping, so it's bad sequencing on my part. Heavy Ball... Uh, I'll just take Pidgeot out to make sure we don't deck this game. Um, so there is merit, in my opinion, to super rotting now to get them comfy, because I have the jet board. Um, but I... Our opponent has one gate in the loss zone, one in their discard. So they would need gate, switching card to attack with Tina. Um, and I have... I can conceal the cards. I'd rather just save it. Okay, Jet Energy and Switch, that's fantastic. Really happy with that. Because I didn't prize any Ancient Supporters, so if I have to conceal the cards next turn, I have a pretty decent shot. There's six outs. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, nice. Okay, Poke Gear, perfect. Um, I could consider milling this with Greninja to try and get a better out, but I'll just Poke Gear. We should hit. Nice. Grab this. I think we only have one in the discard, so. Can't saw it back to back turns, but. Oh no, we have. Oh, that's right, because I concealed last turn. So I'm actually only going to take one out of the discard, so if I draw saw it again, I can do it. So that's one thing when you play this deck, like, you don't have to saw it every single turn. Um, so, Jet Energy would have been nice here to protect this. Uh, is it ever worth retreating here? I think the answer is no. I'd rather just have Countercatcher online. Um, I have Calamitous Wasteland for next turn. Nice. Mill Diono, so that's a way they can put cards back. Um, so yeah, Giratina normally plays like three switch, three switch cart-ish, like four jet. So we have down one jet um, for their switching outs and a gate in here. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to saw that this turn. Yeah, Sada, and then I have Countercatcher on that Greninja. And then I have Calamitous Wasteland, so... Um, so now I think it's fine to Super Rod, so let's do it. Put back a Tusk, and I'm going to put back the Comfy, because I have the Jet Board, or Escape Board, or whatever it's called. We're going to Artisan first, then the deck. Um, you can never have too many Great Tusks, to be honest. That's fine. It's a Nest Ball for the Comfy, because we don't want to draw it. Um, honestly, I could have sought it first, but this is the exact same. Uh, the sequencing doesn't matter. I guess I, I get more information if I sought it first. So, bad sequencing on my part. Don't do that. <laughs> but I don't think it'll matter here. Alright. Nice. So, yeah, let's bring up Greninja. It's just the hardest thing for them to attack with. If they use Moonlight Shuriken, I do not care. Put the Wasteland down. Force them to burn a switching card, not just an energy. We'll Bravey Charm the Tusk, so they can't shred with Giratina V. They have to evolve to the V-Star. Um, I do know they play Iona, so I'm going to put this down right now. Uh, but yeah, let's Power Pad. Put the supporters back in case I get Ionode. No reason to hold. Uh, actually, I only have one adventure. I was going to say, if, uh, I don't have any energy in my discard, so Explorers is better right now. So, yeah. Next turn, we might actually have to retreat to uh, play an Ancient Supporter, but we'll see. And then Calamitous Wasteland does not apply to Great Tusk. But even if it did, I have Double Turbo to retreat. Okay, so there's that Jet Energy that they're going to burn. So it looks like they might cram us this turn. But they're running super low on cards. They're going to be at 9 after this Flower Select. Plus Straw for turn next turn is 8. So after we just need 2 mills with Lands Collapse. Um, they should have 1 or 2 Rods left, I think. 
We milled one, I thought. Oh, we didn't mill one? I could have sworn we milled one. I guess we didn't. Uh, so they have Rod left. But now they're going to get four in their deck. So even if they Rod twice, that puts them back to ten. And assuming they drop return twice, we just need to mill twice again. So still in a good spot. Okay. There's that rod. And then I don't really care if they knock me out, because then I just saw to because the energies go back to my discard. We have double turbo if we need it. I have Comfy ready to keep helping us get through our deck, so no, we're in a really good spot. Uh, and we're pretty much Iona proof, which is what I love about this deck is um what's it called? Once you uh get Iona, like you draw six because we're never taking prizes. So it's really hard to disrupt this deck, and Giratina can't even play Roxanne. So uh, I think they're going to abyss seeking it themselves. Uh, oh no, they have Super Rod. Okay, I thought they were going to go for a stylish deck out. Yeah, this is a great matchup, I think, for Great Tusk. Um, they don't have a good way to deal with the Tusks, right? Like, a lot of Giratina lists don't play Vacuum. It looks like this list doesn't. So the Bravery Charms just make sure they can't shred. If they evolve the Giratina V-Star, they're just going to run out of energy. If you mill, like, a Super Rod, like... At any point in the game, it makes it hard for them. The crams are always two-shotting, so you just get so much. Okay, they do play the, the vacuum, as I'm saying that. But, yeah, this, this is a great matchup, in my opinion. Um, any deck that has trouble one-shotting the Great Tusks is going to be a fantastic matchup for you. Nice. Okay, I'm going to promote this one, so if they knock it out again, uh, then I have energy in the discard. Uh, but, I mean, our opponent's deck is so thin, even if they have Iono here, we should be good to go. All right. Uh, I could have put up Comfy, to be honest. Uh, I don't know why I didn't, but <laughs> we don't really need to. Okay, so let's Sada. I'm going to Sada 1. So if I draw another Sada, I can use it again. Okay, I have Jet Energy if I ever need that. Uh, let's just put this here to, in case we get Iona or something. Put that there. Uh, and I could Super Rod now if I wanted. Uh, I'll just wait. Our deck is, like, all supporters, so I don't have to worry if I get Iono here. Okay. And then let's see if our opponent has a response. So, Super Rod doesn't really do much for them. Um, Iono doesn't do much for them. So I think we have them here. Yep, they're just going to shred, and they have zero cards. So that was a pretty easy game for us.